In the previous video we created the home page and in this video we'll create the news archive but not before we tweak the home page just a little more. Now let's dive into our page controller again. You see I forgot to add a where statement before fetching the home page articles. Of course we only want to fetch articles where the pub date is less than or equal to today. And then in the home page view I would like to add in an anchor that links to the news archive. Now I could hard code it but that would get us into trouble if we ever change the URL for news archive. So let's open up the page model and create a public method called get archive link and that will give us the link to the news archive. Inside we'll fetch a page where the template is news archive and then we'll pass in true as the second parameter to indicate that we want a single object returned. Then we'll return the page slug if it exists or an empty string if it doesn't. Now open up the front end controller and set a variable called news archive link. Set it using the page model method we created just now. And now we'll have access to the news archive link in every view. Some more tweaking will be done in styles.css. I'll remove the h3 anchor selector here so our sidebar links will show up blue again. And finally inside of the CMS helper I'll just add an extra symbol to the link so it will be even more obvious that the link can be clicked. Finally let's open up the home page view and add in the link to the news archive we talked about earlier. So we'll do echo anchor and pass in the news archive link variable we set in the front end controller. And let's just make the text uh, plus news archive. Now let's check that in the browser. Yes that does look better. Now let's code the news archive method in our page controller. Just close the rest here. First let's plan our code. Now we want only a limited number of articles to show up on a single page. So we'll count all articles that match our criteria. Then we'll set up paging. And finally we'll fetch the articles that we will be displaying in the view. Ok time to get our hands dirty. Now let's again set the where statement for pub date so we only get published articles. Just copy it in from here. And then we'll count all records so we can set up paging. Just do this db count all results and apply it to the table articles. Let's check that with a quick dump. That should be 6 articles. And yes it is. Then for pagination. Now we'll set the number of articles to show per page to 4. Now if the total number of articles is greater than the number of articles we wish to show we'll need to add pagination. Let's have a look at the user guide to see how to set that up. Let's just copy this bit of code here and bring it into our controller. As you can see we'll need to set a small config array. First we'll load the pagination library like so. And then we'll set the base URL to this URI segment 1. And we'll add in a slash as well. Now make sure to use an absolute URL or pagination won't work properly. Now total rows will equal the article count we defined earlier so let's just bring that in. And we already set the number for articles per page so let's bring in the per page variable as well. Finally we'll need an extra config setting called URI underscore segment. Now by default pagination assumes that the counter is in the third URI segment. If it's not you need to pass the segment in this setting. In our case it will be the second segment so we'll just pass 2 here. And then we'll initialize pagination and we'll store the links into a variable called pagination. And then we need to set an offset parameter that we'll use in the limit statement when we fetch our articles later on. Now if we do not need pagination we'll set pagination to an empty string so calling it in the view won't throw a warning. And then we'll set the offset for articles to 0. Now let's just dump our pagination string and see if we set it up correctly. Click those links. Yep that looks cool. Now we'll need to fetch those articles. Again we'll copy the where statement for pub date and paste it in here. Now we'll limit the results. Pass in the limit parameter first and that will be the per page value and pass in the offset as the second parameter. Now watch out this is exactly the other way around from regular SQL syntax. Ok now let's dump the article count 
and the query statement so we can check exactly what's going on. Now let's check that in the browser. Well, it looks like I forgot to load the article model. So let's do that now and check again. Okay, that looks good. We're taking pub date into account and limiting the results to full. And now for the second page, uh, we are setting the offset to full in the URL and that's also set in the query and we have only two results. Yep, that's exactly what we want to see. So now that we know we are indeed getting the correct data, let's remove these dumps here and get ready to display those data in the news archive view. So let's open up that view file and we'll open up the homepage view as well. We'll copy the markup from the homepage view and paste it into the news archive view and we'll adjust it to be used here. Now let's start with the conditional. We'll check if we have pagination. We'll just use PHP alternative syntax for that. And then we'll need an MDF as well. Now inside of that conditional, we'll just create a section with a class of pagination and echo the pagination links. Now let's see how that looks. Hmm, that could do with a little more tweaking. Let's go back to the controller and set some more configuration for pagination. Now let's just see if we can make this support the Twitter bootstrap style, which is wrapping our pagination inside of a non-ordered list. Okay, we'll add full tag open and set it to UL. And then we'll add full tag close and set it to slash UL. Now that will wrap the pagination in an unordered list. Now we'll just have to wrap the rest in this tags. So let's go ahead and do just that. We'll set the first link to false so it won't be displayed. And we'll do the same for last link. Then we'll set the next tag open to Lee and next tag close to slash Lee. And let's just duplicate these lines a couple of times because all this configuration is really getting on my nerves. Now let's see, prev link open and prev link close. Car tag open and car tag close. Num tag open and num tag close. And that should be it. Let's check. No, that doesn't look good at all. There's a problem with the current tag and with the previous tag, I think. So let's fix that. Okay, we'll probably need to add an anchor tag to the current tag. Twitter Bootstrap expects all pagination items to be links and I don't think CodeIgniter returns the current item as a link. So, for the previous tags. Ah, I see that should be prev tag open. So let's fix that. And prev tag close. And then there's some more typos here. It should be card tag closed, not card tag closed. And the same goes for num tag closed. Ah, yes, much better. Now, we'll take the generic settings out of our controller. And then, in the config folder, I'll create a new file called pagination.php. Now, CodeIgniter will automatically use the settings there for all pagination. So, I'll just paste that in there, and Bob's your uncle. Now, let's finish our batch of articles to display. We'll do another conditional. If we have any articles, let's do a for each articles as article. Also, let's add an end for each and an end if statement to close these out properly. Inside, we'll just replace div with article just to make our code a little more semantic and we'll add a horizontal rule to the end of the article. And let's pass the article to the get excerpt function. Now check to see how that looks. Yep, that will suit our needs. Now we can safely remove the next row and the reference to articles in the sidebar. Let's just load a view called sidebar here. This view will be a generic sidebar that we'll reuse, so it will have its own view file. So let's create that, but we'll leave it empty for now. Or on second thoughts, let's take the link to the news archive and paste it in there. Okay, we'll do one final check before closing up shop for today. We have four articles here. And when we click the next link, we have two more, so that's good. They are indeed ordered by PubDate, so that's good as well. Now the read more link is good, although we haven't created a way to handle that link yet. Let's just go back. And there's a link to the news archive in our sidebar. So, all dandy. And that wraps up the news archive. In the next video, we'll create the article detail controller and view, and we'll populate the sidebar with the three latest news articles. I'll see you then.